Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for August 2018. So before we jump in Taurus, the September session of Astrology 101 is kicking off September 1st. Registration closes August 25th. So if you're wanting to get signed up for that session, just click in the description box down below or come visit me at stormygrace.com to get all of the details and get yourself registered to be in class September 1st, okay? All right, Taurus, so this month, man, we are not out of the woods. We're still in a very heavy retrograde time as we come into the month of August, but we do have some shifts in energy happening in August that will help start to move things forward, but really the forward motion is not until the end of the month. Now, this month we do have Mercury coming direct. We've got Mars coming direct. We've got Uranus, who's now in your sign going retrograde, like just when you're like, you kind of figured out how to be flexible and go with his electric energy Taurus he's gonna go take a nap you're like oh I am definitely shaken not stirred you know what I mean <laughs> and then we've got a solar eclipse and of course our full moon for the month as well so let's just jump in here we're gonna break it down by date and walk through this month Taurus okay so right at the beginning of the month here on the 6th, we've got Venus, your ruling planet, making a move over into Libra. Now this lights up your 6th house. The thing that I think a lot about when I'm looking at this Venus in the 6th house energy is that it could be bringing harmony to a work situation, to a daily routine that you've had going on, to something in your health. It is always wise when Venus moves into the health house um, because sometimes she can just get very much so in the mental portions of your being as well and you're just sitting around eating these delicious snacks and it's August we're barbecuing it's also delicious so be mindful of not just standing there eating okay because it can be really a delicious time I'm a Taurus I'm telling you I'm gonna be watching myself on the sixth all right when we get to the seventh of the month, Uranus is going to turn retrograde in your sign. Now, Uranus, our very electric, do it different, break down these barriers, energy came into your sign, blasting in, and it has just been changing, saying, hey, this isn't going to work. Take this structure down. We need an overhauling here, Taurus. I need you to start showing up differently. But then when we're here on the seventh and this planet turns retrograde first of all you may kind of feel like the wind has been knocked out of your sails a little bit because you have been vibrating so high it's been raising your consciousness a lot and changing some of the things you've been doing so don't be surprised if you kind of feel like woof the wind's been taken out of my sail just a little bit now the other thing that i think about with this uranus going retrograde is of course bringing things back from the past right bringing things you know Taurus, this may be a time in your life where something comes up that maybe you applied for a job you just absolutely never thought you would get and you did it over a year ago or something like that and it comes zooming back into your life or something very, very surprising because Uranus is a surprise energy could be coming back to you from the past. And it could probably be something because Uranus does things in a very shocking kind of way. It could be something that is very um, shocking or surprising or just kind of makes you go, oh my gosh. Now I do want to be clear. I do not necessarily think that this has to be negative. I do think if there are things from your past that you were trying to get cleaned up or cleared up, that could be something that's coming up, but it doesn't necessarily have to be anything terribly negative, but it could just be something that really rocks you out of your comfort zone just a little bit, okay? Now, I do want to say this too, because Uranus is in your first house, it's in your sign. Whenever I look at the first house, I know that if you're changing, you're shifting in that identity, things will be changing in your career life as well. So there could be some changes coming to the career. You spent July having to probably look over what you wanted to be doing in your career, your actual business, whatever it is along that professional vein for you, you've probably spent some time looking back over how to have that be as effective, as creative, as efficient as you need it to be. And this shakeup could actually create you coming into this new setting as a brand new person, right? You're going back to you from the past and you're like, that person won't work to run my business. I have got to show up as the new improved version, right? So all of the working and all of the reviewing, re-editing that you've done during the retrograde time is not for naught. Truly, it's been very, very valuable. Just give it some time so that you can see. 
Last thing that I will say is this before we talk about this new moon. Be mindful of what you're trying to push and force forward, especially if it's you. If you're trying to make yourself align with that social group, if you're trying to make this thing happen in your career or in your education tours, if it feels like it's not working, take your hands off, back off. You do not need to put the choke hold on your life right now. Some things just don't belong right now. Kind of trust the universe to show you which things need to be let go of, okay? On the 11th, we've got a new moon partial solar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo. Now, this is lighting up your fourth house. We've also got Mercury retrograde over here at the time of this um, solar eclipse, okay? So what I think of is that there could be some changes in your domestic zone. You could be moving. Um, you could be, because Mercury is retrograde over there, you could be feeling like just a fresh start is really coming in. You're willing to revise your housing, living, being, foundation situation, maybe even your relationship with your mom or women in your world, and you're willing to have a reset to those. Like your mind has changed, you're different, you're in a different mental decisive place than you were before and so this energy is giving you that solar boost of planting these seeds of intention for brand new beginnings now the other thing that could be happening because we do still have mars retrograde and mercury is still retrograde here you could have a person in your domestic space or a family member or something like that that you're having a little bit of conflict with right there could be something that is um, holding you back for moving forward. Now, this could be your domestic space, your house where you're living. This could also be those foundational ideas. Are you still struggling to shed and put down these ideas that maybe your family ingrained in you when you were younger, but they don't exactly apply anymore, but you're having a hard time putting them down. It's okay to get different. I'm a Taurus too. It's okay for us to change. I promise. And you'll have a lot more clarity on August 19th when Mercury turns direct anyways, okay? So this too shall pass. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass, okay? <laughs> All right, when we get to the 12th here, it looks like Mars is going to enter back into the sign of Capricorn. So lighting up your ninth house. Where I think this is phenomenal is if you have been having a hard time in educational things, um, things that have to do with licensing, certifications, any of that kind of stuff. With Mars retrograde back here, you may be going back over one of these things. You may be going over something about your life philosophy. Definitely faith. You will be really looking over reconsidering faith, travel, um, maybe even maybe you wanted to learn a foreign language or you knew one before and you want to go back to studying it. Something like that. There's going to be some kind of reevaluation in this ninth house space for you. And I think as the month ends, you here have more action to wrap something up because Mars comes direct and you'll also have a lot more clarity um, on maybe what's in the way that you need to get over us as an obstacle to move those things forward, okay? On the 23rd, the sun is going to move into Virgo. It's lighting up, again, this beautiful um, fifth house space for you. It's going to be bringing in this energy over here of joy, of expression, of things with your children. This is the time of year in the Western world where we are starting back to school, right? So the lights are on, we are moving forward. Sorry, I jumped over this, but on the 19th, Mercury does come direct in the sign of Leo in your fourth house. So this is why I say, you guys, you may feel like you have a more decisive motion and action and readiness as we get to the fourth of the month. Now keep in mind with Mercury being direct, he's not super helpful right when he comes direct, right? You gotta give him a couple days. And the shadow time doesn't end until September 2nd, which means he's still kind of bringing back some past stuff, but he is a lot more helpful at moving forward. It's just not all the way done yet to the second, okay? That doesn't mean you have to hold off. If you've got contracts and decisions to make, you're safe to go ahead and do those after the 19th, of course, depending on your chart. Now, finally, to wrap up the month, Taurus, on the 26th of the month, we have got a full moon happening in the sign of Pisces. All right, so this full moon happening here is in the friendship sector. We've got Uranus retrograde in your sign. It could be a time where if you've had some kind of um, situation happen in a friendship, in a social group, if you feel like you're not aligned with the social groups um, that you're networking with, even your, maybe it's time for a Facebook, Instagram, Instagram clean out, something like that. Wherever it is, if you're feeling like there's not an alignment there, 
you could certainly be in a space of ending, acknowledging, or adjusting the changes that need to be happening here. Now, the other part that I do think about in the 11th house, because it's Pisces and it's such a giving energy, is this could be something going on with a friend of yours or an organization or a group of yours in your life, and you're being asked to suit up and show up and be there and be compassionate and be helpful or find creative solutions to what's going on. And the thing is, is that I really feel like having this energy now back into your ninth house and that Capricorn energy with Mars there, even before it's come out of retrograde, I feel like your faith is at a different depth this month. You trust yourself, you trust your actions, and maybe you're just like, I don't know what I trust, I'm just okay with being here, right? So you're able to kind of fill a support role as we get towards the end of the month, and that's what that Pisces energy really, really is about, okay? All right, you guys, I think it's going to be a really good month. I think you can make it a really good month. I do think it is still a time where we're not in full power, especially, my goodness, you've got that retrograde um, Uranus in your sign. It's going to shake your, your world for just a couple days at least. But we still have the opportunity to be productive because you know what's happening while it feels like nothing's happening is everything is happening. You've gathered good intel, good information to get ready to leap forward as we get towards the end of August and move into September and of course get ready to close out our year. So I think it's going to be a beautiful month, Taurus. If I can help you, come and visit me at stormygrace.com. Leave me comments down below. Of course, like this video and I would just love it if you would share it as well, all right? All right, Taurus, have a great month. I'll see you next month. Bye.